this class we discuss about Thevenin's theorem. Leon Charles Thevenin was born in Paris on March 30, 1857. He graduated from Eclogue Polytechnic in 1876 and two years later joined the crops of telegraph engineers. Appointed as a teaching inspector in the Eclogue Superior D Telegraphy in 1882. He got interested in the problems of measurement in electrical circuit. As a result of studying Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law, he developed his famous theorem, Thevenin's theorem, which made it possible to calculate currents in more complex electrical circuits and allowing people to reduce complex circuits into simpler circuits called Thevenin's equivalent circuits. His theorem was published in three scientific journals in 1883. In a paper entitled Extension of Ohm's Law to Complex Electrical Circuits. Three more articles followed in that year. The first gave a method of using a galvanometer to measure potential, making use of the new theorem. The second described the method of measuring resistance, and the third was on the use of the Wheatstone Bridge. He was described as a humble man, a model engineer, and a kind-hearted person. He died on 21st September 1926 in Paris. He lived for 69 years in this planet. And even today, he lives in every basic electrical <coughs> and electronics textbook. Thevenin's Theorem any linear active bilateral network can be replaced by an equivalent circuit consisting of voltage source in series with the resistance. The voltage source is open circuit voltage across the open circuited load terminals and the resistance being the internal resistance of the source network looking from the open circuited load terminals. Or any two terminal linear network containing independent voltage and current sources may be replaced by constant voltage source that is called as Thevenin's voltage in series with the resistance that is Thevenin's resistance where Thevenin's voltage is the open circuit voltage between the terminals and Thevenin's resistance is the resistance of the network as seen from the two terminals with all sources replaced by their internal resistances. Applications of Thevenin's Theorem Number 1 This theorem is extensively used in networks to determine the current through any element or voltage across any element in a network without rigorous calculations for solving a set of network equations. Number 2. It is useful in circuit analysis when it necessary to find the current only in one branch of a circuit. Number 3. It is also useful when it is necessary to study the variation in the current in a branch of the circuit when the resistances of this branch are varied. These are all the applications of Thevenin's theorem. Now we will see the explanation of Thevenin's theorem. This is a voltage source V. This is R1, R2 and R3. A low resistance is connected across a point A and B. I apply the Thevenin's theorem. First step is remove the load resistance. Just I remove the load resistance. Voltage across AB is equal to VOC. That is VOC is the voltage across the resistance R2. Since there is no current flow through the resistance R3. Therefore, I can find I1. I1 is equal to V divided by R1 plus R2. Therefore, VOC is equal to I1 into R2. I know I1. Therefore, VOC is equal to V into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That open circuit voltage is called as Thevenin's voltage. That is a step 1. Step 2, I short the voltage source. Therefore, the resistors R1 into, uh, and R2 are in parallel. 
therefore the total resistance or Thevenin's resistance is equal to R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3 that is the Thevenin's resistance. I know the Thevenin's voltage, I know the Thevenin's resistance. I can easily find the load current I. Here this is V Thevenin's, this is R Thevenin's that is the resistance and I connect the resistance across point A and B. Now I can easily calculate the current I. I is equal to V Thevenin's divided by total resistance R Thevenin's plus RL. This is the explanation of Thevenin's theorem. Now we will work out one problem using Thevenin's theorem. Find the current through the galvanometer. The galvanometer resistance is 3 ohm. This is a circuit. This is 10 ohm. This is 100 ohm. This is 88 ohm. This is 8.5 ohm. This is a voltage source. This is plus. This is minus 0.05 volts. Galvanometer resistance is 3 ohms. Another voltage source. This is plus. This is minus 5. First I solve the problem using Maxwell's mesh method or loop method. In the Maxwell's loop method, I have to form the loops. This is loop 1, loop 2, loop 3. The current direction is clockwise. This is I1, I2, I3. First, I have to form the matrix. First diagonal limit is 100 plus 88, 188. The second loop resistance is 100 plus 10 plus 3, that is equal to 113. The third loop resistance is 88 plus 8.5 plus 3, that is equal to 99.5. Which element is common to 1 and 2? 100. The sign is minus. Minus 100, minus 100. Which element is common to 1 and 3? 88. Minus 88, minus 88. Which element is common to 2 and 3? Minus 3, minus 3. I1, I2, I3. That is equal to 5. This is 5 volts. The second loop, there is a 0. The third, we have a minus 0.05 volts. Once I form uh, this uh, equation, I can easily find I1, I2, I3. I1 is equal to 0.294. I2 is equal to 0.267. I3 is equal to 0.267. Now I verify the Kirchhoff's current law. This is current towards the junction is 0.294. Here current towards the 100 ohm resistance is 0.027. Current towards the 10 ohm resistance is 0.267. So 0.267 plus 0.027 that is equal to 2.294. Next current towards the 8.5 is 0 0.267. Current towards the 88 ohm resistance is 0.027. Therefore current leaving the junction is 0.294. Current towards the junction is 0 0.294. Current leaving the junction is 0.294. Next I, I apply the Thevenin's theorem. First step, I remove the load resistance. That is the step one. I remove the galvanometer. Here, this is A, this is B. Now, I have to find the Thevenin's voltage. Here, I redraw the diagram like this. This is 100, this is 88, this is 5 volts. This is 10, this is 8.5, this is 0.05 volts. I can find I1 and I2. I1 is equal to 5 divided by 188. That is 100 plus 88. 188, that is equal to 0.027. This current is 0.027. I2 is equal to 5 minus 0.05 divided by 10 plus 8.5 that is 18.5 that is equal to 0.268. I2 is equal to 0 0.268. Therefore, I is equal to current towards this junction is equal to 0.027 plus 0.268 that is equal to 0.295. Here the current is 0.29. Here the current is 0.294. Now I have to form the, find the Thevenin's voltage. Here I know the current, branch current. I can easily find the VOB. This is the voltage across 100 ohm resistance. 100 ohm resistance 100 into 0.027. That is equal to 2.7. Similarly, I can find VOA. Let me say this is VOA. Is equal to 10 into the current is 0.268. That is equal to 2.68. Therefore, Thevenin's voltage is equal to VOB, this voltage, minus this voltage. That is equal to 2.7 minus 2.68. That is equal to 0.02 volts. Thevenin's voltage is 0.02. Next, I have to find the Thevenin's resistance. For the Thevenin's resistance, what I have to do? I have to short the batteries. When I short the batteries, I redraw the diagram like this. This is 10. This is 8.5. This is 100. This is 88. These two are in parallel. I have to find the resistance across A and B. These two are in parallel. Therefore, 10 into 8.5 divided by 18.5. That is equal to 4.59. Here, 
Here these two are in parallel 100 into 88 divided by 188 that is equal to 46.81 The tolerance resistance is 4.59 plus 46.81 that is equal to 51.4 Tolerance resistance is 51.4 Tolerance voltage is 0.02 I redraw the diagram like this This is 0.02 this is 51.4 Now I add the load resistance Load resistance is 3 Therefore I is equal to 0.02 divided by 54.4 almost equal to 0 I can vary the resistance 3 instead of 3 I can put 5, 10 whatever may be the resistance I can easily find the current through the galvanometer instead of galvanometer I can connect any resistance I can find the current that is the main advantage of Thevenant theorem with this I conclude my lecture thanks for listening